The animation in this episode was absolutely phenomenal, but the best part has gotta be these Haros, which are packing heat. <laughs> Powerful Nerdcast assembles! Stay dandy, baby. Greetings, my friends, and welcome to another review of Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury. It looks like this series is almost done. And this episode just poured on the action and the high-class animation. There's no getting around it. This episode looked phenomenal. This is easily the best action episode of the entire series series. You can really tell that they were pouring all of their budget into this episode, which was a relatively simple episode, but one which carried a lot of weight behind it. This was essentially the big final battle of the episode, as Suleta and all of their comrades made their way to Quiet Zero to try and shut it down from the inside out, while Suleta herself has to deal with her sister, Eret. And as if that were not enough, we also got an epic duel between Gwail and his brother Lauda, who has gone completely fucking insane. I'd also like to go ahead and just issue a spoiler warning. If you haven't watched this episode, go check it out and then come back to this video. Because I want to talk about some surprising aspects of this episode. First and foremost being that, is anybody shocked that no one died in this episode? I was certain that Choo Choo, Martin, or at least someone from Earth House was going to get axed in this episode. I even thought that maybe even Gwail was going to die in this episode, but no. Amongst all the destruction and mobile suit battles, and the fact that the Space Assembly League is about to wipe out everybody with a giant interplanetary space laser, everybody's pretty much fine. Everybody's got the devil's luck in this episode. And you know what? You don't even need a character death to add to the intensity of this episode. This one really had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. And you know what? There's just no way that I can even do the episode justice in terms of talking about its animation. You just kind of have to see it for yourself. It is really high caliber stuff. I mean, the episode immediately opens up with uh, Suleta and the Calabarn going up against Eric and the Aerial Gundam. And it is just a feast for the friggin' eyes. The speed and movement of the Calabarn and just the fact that the Aerial Gundam also manages to get some pretty cool moments in just makes this one of the best looking action scenes of the entire episode. It's all the more intense because Suleta is basically pushing her body to the brink while desperately trying to reach out to Aerie, telling her that they have got to stop all of this. While all of that's going on, of course, Gwail and Lauda are having a fight, and I really wish we could have seen a little bit more of the Gundam Schwartz set in action. I mean, this is really the only episode we really got to see it do much of anything but it leaves one hell of an impact. It looks really awesome, but I love its weapon, which essentially is like this giant blade which can break off into multiple pieces, but its big signature ability is the fact that basically it can fire multiple lasers in different directions. And again, you just have to see it for yourself. It looks so awesome watching this thing just slice through Gwail's mobile suit. And like I said, their entire battle was really heavy, especially because Gwail was desperately trying to get through to his brother to the point where he actually allowed allows himself to be defeated by his brother. He allows himself to be impaled by his weapon, which of course conveniently segues into a flashback of where he met his brother for the first time. I say met his brother because apparently he's adopted. I don't know if this was ever brought up before or maybe it's something that I missed, but basically it's a great moment for Gwail showing him embrace Lauda despite the fact that he is adopted and he has no one else that he can turn to. He accepts him immediately as his brother. And this is a sort of a nice allusion to everything that's going on in this battle despite the turmoil between the two brothers, he manages to embrace him mobile suit to mobile suit, and this sort of causes Lauda to get out of his funk, and it almost seems like at this moment, this big attack that he launched on uh, Gwail's mobile suit was going to kill him and cause it to explode in space, but luckily, Felsi just arrives out of nowhere and is able to stop this explosion, so the brothers get over their bullshit, and they manage to hug it out and everybody gets to live. Pretty freaking awesome, I have to say. And even though the mobile suits are truly the stars of this episode, I did love all of the moments where Mio and her crew are making their way into Quiet Zero. And the way that it happens is a little strange. For some odd reason, Quiet Zero just sort of shuts down for a little bit. You could owe this a little bit to the, uh, the gunned format technology, the fact that it sort of has a will of its own. It can just sort of 
do it at once. It was a little convenient and maybe there's something I'm missing here, but it was a little strange, but it gave them the perfect opportunity to go in here and get some things done. Basically, they gotta enter those codes and shut this thing down, but Prospera is not going to let them do that all that easily as she herself gets involved in this confrontation herself, taking a gun and getting ready to go to Bang Bang Town. And I didn't expect that the security was going to involve Haros, which are essentially hooked up to these mechanized weapons, which are basically gonna fire on anyone who tries to make their way into Quiet Zero's depths. It's a really shocking image, but it was great. And again, I thought someone was just gonna get blasted here, but no one manages to get hurt during this entire confrontation, even with Prospera bearing down on top of them, getting ready to blast them away, with Belmaria making a desperate attempt to stop her, and a really great moment of Elon being able to not only, you know, get rid of the Haros, but also to blast Prospera's helmet off, allowing Neo to get in there and use that encrypted message to stop Quiet Zero. And of course, it's one which is connected directly to her mother. It's a nice, touching moment, and it really works in this scene and rather than just be done with the villain and dispose of her right here Mio decides to reach out a hand and declare that with her and Ari and Suleta they can be a family this seems to really piss off Prospera as her entire plans have pretty much been destroyed but maybe she will be able to get through to her during all the chaos Delling actually manages to get back on his feet again and reaches out to the Space Assembly League trying to get them all together for a meeting to try and stop everything that's going on here but but the Space Assembly League has proven multiple times in the past, and they prove it yet again here, that they're just a bunch of scared douchebags, as their overall plan here is just to destroy everything with their massive interplanetary laser. It's not the first giant laser we've seen in Gundam, it'll probably certainly never be the last, but it was really devastating at the end getting to see this thing just light up and fire at Quiet Zero, which forces Aerie and Ariel's hand as they summon all of those different mobile suit bits. This takes the brunt of the attack, saving everyone in the process, but possibly killing her as the episode ends as Suleta looks on in horror as her sister is the one who made the sacrifice to save all of them. And I don't know about you guys, but I just absolutely love how in this season almost every single episode ends with that ending song just leading into the end of the episode and it just amplifies the feeling of despair and hopelessness every single time and it almost makes me well up every single time I hear it and seeing that final shot of this episode of the aerial just completely wrecked and destroyed and Suleta looking on in horror it just it really hit me hard so final thoughts on this episode this one was fantastic. It, it was sort of like a dive into family turmoil, so to speak. There are a lot of different parallels going on of the relationship between Gwail and Lauda, Suleta and her mother Prospera, and of course her relationship with Eri as well. It shows that even when terrible things happen, when families are ripped apart, there's still an opportunity for them to come together and realize what truly is important about what it means to look out for one another and to love each other as a family. And somehow they cram giant robots into that and make it really exciting too. The one word that I would use to describe this episode though is probably going to be spectacle. This was just a really good looking episode. It's the type of episode that I cannot wait to watch again, if only to see the amazing animation and all of the great decisions they made to make it just all the more better. I mean, if it's not just the animation itself, it is the use of music. I love the super atmospheric, high octane music in this episode. It's very over the top and crazy, and I can definitely feel a little bit of that Attack on Titan sort of like influence in it, but it works so well to just sort of like amplify everything in this episode in the best way possible. This is definitely an action heavy episode and one that I've been waiting to see. I've been waiting to see the series take off its kids gloves and go crazy with some really great mobile suit action. And this one really delivered in every single way. You know, as much as I love the Calabarn and it's crazy, you know, broomstick laser and the aerial just being like the typical awesome Gundam. I loved seeing Gwail and his brother have an epic fight in this episode. The Schwartz set has got to be one of the most unique Gundams that I've seen in quite some time, if only for its color scheme, the fact that it doesn't have the traditional V crest, but more of like a circular crest on the top of its head, and of course that unique weapon, which just emits lasers from freaking every direction. It is just awesome to see. That's it, you know, it's not just spectacle. This episode's just 
awesome. Just a really fucking awesome episode of the series. And I cannot wait to see how everything is going to fully wrap up in the final episode. Because now that Eri has seemingly been destroyed, we do have a final confrontation where our characters are probably going to have to take down the Space Assembly League's giant laser. And that's probably going to come with a lot of other mobile suits getting involved in the battle. And just because no characters died in this episode doesn't mean they're not safe from the final episode of the series. I truly hope things are going to be able to wrap up nicely as we have a big final confrontation to wrap up, not to mention character moments, interactions. I, I just want to see what's going to happen and to see if there's a potential for more in the future. As I've said it many times, I think that The Witch from Mercury uh, has not really reached its full potential and they could do a lot more with it. But if they can manage to wrap up everything nicely in the next episode of the series and do it in a good way... I'm going to be pretty satisfied. And as far as this episode goes right here, as an action junkie, as someone who loves action anime and just really cool kick-ass robots fighting in space, yeah, this one is pretty damn cool. I loved it. And I might have simplified it just a little bit, um, but still, that's why you guys are here. I love hearing your thoughts about these episodes, and uh, I'd love to hear all of them in the comment section below telling me what you thought about this episode right here and what you're hoping to see in the final episode of the series if you think they're going to be able to wrap up everything nicely if there should be more in the future and of course i just want to hear your thoughts about all of the big epic moments that took place in this episode right here how it affected you on an emotional level and how you think the series ultimately is going to come to an end so big discussion comment section below thank you guys so much for watching this review i'll see you all next time and as always stay Damn there, baby.